Hi everybody. We're starting a new video series, our Apple Lied to Me series. Our Apple Lied to Me video series is meant to encourage you to get a second opinion when Apple tells you that your device can't be repaired, especially when that traps important data inside your device. It's a difficult problem to institutionalize repair, and we know that. Repair is part physician and part art. It can be time consuming. It isn't always profitable. We understand that Apple will always favor replacement over repair, and that's okay. But don't lie. Apple, if you know what's wrong, if you don't know what's wrong with the device, just, just say so. I don't know. This isn't something I've seen before. I don't know what's going on. Don't lie about it. Don't make up a reason. Don't invent some, you know, intelligent sounding <laughs> set of words to make the consumer feel like you know what you're talking about when you don't. Just be honest. If you know a device has a common problem, you've seen it before, maybe you've seen it a lot, then don't act like you've never heard of it before and that it's something that is not common when it is. That's just wrong. If you choose not to offer simple solutions when someone comes in with a dead phone and they just want you to plug in a battery to see if they can get a backup before they turn it in and buy a new phone from you, if you don't want to do that, that's okay, but just, just tell them the truth. Insist that the frontline service people at Apple inform customers in that situation that there are other options outside of the Apple ecosystem. We see that withholding information and giving misleading or wrong information is a restriction on repair as defined by the FTC. So we're doing this video series because we intend to shine a light on examples that we see of this repair restriction in our Apple Lied to Me video series. And for customers, know that Apple frontline employees are not trained to recognize common hardware repairable faults. So if Apple tells you that a phone can't be fixed or the data can't be recovered, then it's important and it's important to you then always get a second opinion. All right, here we go. Tonight we are going to look here at, uh, at Tracy's phone. So Tracy has an iPhone 6 Plus and she, it's dead and I'm gonna read you her note. Now keep in mind, I'm doing this as a live stream. So this may or may not be repairable. I'm just gonna read you the note and then we'll see where this repair goes. So this note, let's see if we can see it this note is from tracy issue description she says the phone will not charge she took it to apple and they said really like to focus this this one is a hoot they said charge is going in but not coming out charge is going in but not coming out they just told me that I needed a new phone. And Tracy would like to see if it can be fixed, and if not, she just wants to get the pictures off because they're not backed up. Let's see what we can do with this one. And maybe Apple's right. Charge is going in, but not coming out. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do with a phone with a complaint of not charging is connect it to, um, you know, before I even open it up, I'm going to connect it to a USB ammeter because sometimes phones uh, will, will actually be charging and other times uh, phones will uh, really be a no power. It doesn't turn on. It's not that it doesn't charge. It's that it doesn't turn on. So let's see which case we're in right here. All right, so this is our USB ammeter. We've used this a lot. Five volts. That's the push push a voltage into the device. And if we see a number that's more or less one amp here, then that would be normal charging. So let's plug this in. All right, so we, I mean, I don't really know, I don't know what to say about this. Charge is going in, but it's not coming out, I guess, I don't know. Uh, so this, this device is charging right now. We know that it's absolutely charging because we see one amp of charging current. So that's electricity that's moving from the brick through the wire and it's going into the phone and into the phone's battery. 
So that's definitely what's going on here. And I, and I, you know, we could just kind of sit it here for long enough to see whether or not it's going to charge up that battery. Right now, I'd be inclined to think that that Tracy had a bad charging cable. I'd be surprised if a phone that can consume charging current as normal and produce image isn't going to boot. All right, we'll see if it can actually charge up. But for the sake of being short, let's see if this phone will not boot. So maybe it's in a boot loop and has a software problem, something like that. That wouldn't be in the category of charge going in and not coming out which is crazy, <laughs> but um, let's take a look. All right, so I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna check in and see what's going on with chat. Where is everybody? Yet nobody got no notifications. I don't know about notifications. I don't know, Apple's at it again. Apple is so bad. All right, so I mean, my, my plan is to just, instead of just getting irritated as I look at all of these notes, which happens pretty much every day, I'll look at a note that comes to me, issue description, Apple said, you know, insert total BS here. I've decided, you know what, I'm just gonna take a few minutes. I mean, it takes a while to set up these streams, um, but I'm gonna do it no matter what, just to, just to get a collection so that people can recognize that even though Apple is doing great things like, hey, let's start up the independent repair providers program, which might be awesome. We're gonna apply. I mean, that sounds fantastic. We'll see what it is. Um, but don't forget, you know, these guys uh, really don't do hardware repair. So, you know, you gotta remember that they don't, they don't see these problems. They don't do this kind of troubleshooting and diagnosis. So how are they supposed to recognize these patterns and be able to predict signature problems? They can't. Just be honest. All right, we're going to plug in the DC power supply. So DC power supply is a battery, a sort of our, our DIY battery. So we're plugging in a, essentially a fully charged battery. The advantage over a fully charged battery is that we'll be able to see what's going on with current consumption in the device. That'll let us tell apart software boot looping from booting but no image, from short circuit, because we'll get that feedback. All right, so let's see what happens when we ask Tracy's phone to boot up just on DC power supply, which is really the equivalent of a fully charged battery. I would get the same effect right now if I were to just plug in a fully charged battery. So let's see. I'm looking at DC power supply and uh, seems to be having a normal current consumption. I see that sort of dance up and down of what looks like a relatively normal boot. So we'll see. It, I would expect it to, to drop or go to recovery mode or something because if it were this easy to just plug in a charged battery and get this phone to boot up, then it's really egregious for Apple to have told Tracy, I'm sorry, you need a new phone because charge is going in and not coming out. So we'll see what happens. They don't do repair. They sell you a new device, says chat. The phone booting, and after that, you can recognize the issue. Yes, let's do. Let's see what this is. Maybe the charging dock needs to be replaced. I mean, I really can't imagine that somebody would go to a store and say, hey, I've got my pictures on here that I really like to back up. This phone is not backed up. And to have the person on the other side of that desk, all right, the phone booted, say, I'm not even going to put in a, a fully charged battery. All right, let's see. Uh, what the, I mean, let's see, do we have touch? We do have touch. All right, I am going to enter their passcode. And this is really bothering me. All right, let's enter, let's clear this. And I'm going to see if I can enter her passcode. Let's see. All right, so it took her passcode and this phone has this phone has booted up. So let's guess that maybe it can't talk to a computer. I mean, this is crazy. This phone has booted up. So with a, you know, with a charged battery in here, you could you should at least be able to, you know, do some kind of a of a iCloud backup. All right, does it detect the computer? The computer detects it. 
it says trust. I'm able to click trust and I, I can back up her stuff right now. Let's see. This is outrageous. This, this is truly outrageous. This phone is able to communicate with the computer. I can type in, it has touch. I can enter a passcode. It says this accessory may not be supported. So, you know, maybe it has a TriStar problem or something, something that's repairable. I mean, we'll, I'm going to stick a battery in it and I'm actually going to plug it back in and see if it can boot on its own battery. But here we go. Case number one in the Apple Lied to Me series appears to be, this is a legitimate case sent in here by Tracy, who says the phone will not charge. She took it to Apple and they said that the charge is going in, but quote, not coming out. And there's, there, there is, as far as I can tell, there is nothing wrong with the device that would prevent you from being able to take a backup. I was able to just plug it in and not only plug it into DC power and it boots up, but it appears to even be charging as normal. And it's, you know, it looks like it's going to charge up this battery and boot up just fine. So this, this is what I'm talking about. This is wrong. This person cares about the memories that are trapped in this phone. As far as she's concerned, this phone is dead and she doesn't know how to troubleshoot it. It's not her job to know how to troubleshoot a phone that was made by somebody else. Uh, that's not her job. So she goes to the people that made the phone and says, hey, I really want the stuff that's in there. And they can't be bothered to recognize that there's a bad cable. That's insane. And they told her to buy a new phone. That is complete and utter lack of troubleshooting. And it's really just wrong. What if, I mean, how did she find out about us? Media, you know, so a news article or something like that. How many people like Tracy are out there that just accept that the person who made the phone said, I'm sorry, charge is going in, but it's not coming out. That's a, that's a meaningless made up thing to say that's ridiculous. That is a lie. That's just what it is. It's a total straight up lie and it's really not cool. So here we go. This is case number one, Tracy's phone. What was really wrong? Nothing. Boots up just fine. Charge is just fine. It can talk to the computer just fine. There's nothing wrong with this phone. Nothing that a little basic troubleshooting common courtesy couldn't solve. You know, if, even if it did have a problem charging, put in a fresh battery, do, do something. Don't just lie. Charge is going in, but it's not coming out. That's a total lie. It's made up BS. And with that, we are going to see you next time for the next case on Apple Lied to Me. Always get a second opinion.